Welcome everyone. Today's video I'm going to be a miniature taxidermist and I'm going to show you how I made this mounted, I guess you would call it a mounted deer head. I used several pictures of real deer heads as a reference to create this pattern in Silhouette Studio and I cut it on my cutting machine. I will be using aluminum foil to help create the armature. I cut all of the pieces with my favorite cardstock, but I probably could have used cereal box as well. I glued four layers together of each piece. Normally, I'm not into this type of thing. I noticed in a lot of the vintage barber shop pictures that they had mounted deer heads and the antlers on the walls. So I figured how I had to at least put one or two in the barber shop. Plus, once I get to the lobby, there's going to be several in there as well. I had to cut down that one pattern piece because I didn't need the head with it. And I didn't think about that when I created the piece. That's going to work better now. I really only needed the back and the shoulder area. I think I forgot that the head sticks out from the wall. That's why I didn't need it. To give it some more support, I was trying to figure out a way to add like a little bracket where it attached the head to the body in the back to give it a little bit more strength. I took out my little jar of circles and I took a large one and I cut it flat on two sides and that created that little bracket that I was talking about. Oh, I forgot to mention too that I had my glue gun plugged in because I'm going to start packing some of the aluminum foil in those little spots. I'm filling it in with the foil in the areas of the body, but I'm not extending past the cardboard armature that I have. I'm just filling in those empty spots, so I won't extend past those edges. That's why I'm using this paintbrush once in a while, and it also helps to smooth it down. I realize later on it really wasn't necessary to pack the foil that tightly and I probably could have gotten away with just using bunched up paper instead of the foil. I should mention too that while I was gluing this foil onto this cardboard armature that I was looking at my reference pictures of the deer heads so that way when I was up in the neck and the head area and on this snout here so that I wasn't making it too thick I kept adding small sections at a time up in the head area and then smoothing it with my paintbrush now and then. When I saw the mounted deer heads in the vintage barbershop pictures, I wasn't sure how I was going to go about creating these. I thought that what I would probably have to do would be to find a plastic animal or maybe a Christmas ornament, something that had a deer and mounted that way. But sometimes the problem with that is to find it the right scale. I'm so glad that I decided to just experiment and try to make it completely myself first. I will be keeping a close eye on Christmas things now to see if I can find some deer heads in different sizes to give that a try. Once I had the foil built up just the way I liked it, I covered the whole piece with masking tape. I made my favorite recipe a paper mache paste that I got from a YouTube channel named Ultimate Paper Mache, and I will link it in the description. And I love this. I used it on the Gnome House when I built it almost 10 years ago. I'm using some thin packing paper that came in a package that I received from Amazon, and I tore it into thin strips. For the antlers, I used two layers of the pattern piece. I wanted it to have a little bit of dimension, so I cut the little strips and then I kind of twisted them a little bit, not a lot, just something to kind of bulk up those antlers. Instead of using hot glue to attach the foil to the antlers, I figured that would just be a big spider web mess. So I ended up using this Alleen's Fast Grab Tacky Glue. And it worked pretty good to hold it in place while I put the masking tape on. I think I let it dry too a little bit before I put the tape on. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that when I was gluing the foil down to the antlers, on the ends, on the tips of the antlers, I would kind of pinch it and point it a little bit. And also, I only did one side. I didn't do the back, but you probably could do the back. 
A big piece of masking tape wouldn't work on those antlers, so what I had to do was cut some little strips of masking tape. I covered the antlers completely with the masking tape, and then I did the paper mache over that, just like I did on the deer head. I'm trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to go about placing these on the head. And I'm thinking that I, I made them just too tall at the base, so I had to cut some of that off. And here I'm making some marks of where I want to put the antlers. So I'm just cutting at it with my scissors. I'm not really cutting anything away, I'm just cutting an opening and then I'm using this bamboo skewer to make the opening a little bit wider. I was really afraid that once I cut the opening for the antler and put it in that it would mess up the top of the head but it looks like it's going to work out okay. I don't have them glued in at this point. I just have them sitting in their opening. I figured that it would help me draw the placement of the eyes before taking them out and painting. I'm using the end of my tweezers to push an indentation to look like the opening of the mouth. And now I'm drawing on the snout. I'm starting off by painting the black part of the eyes first. I'm also painting the snout black as well. When looking at my reference pictures, I noticed that a lot of them, their snouts were all a little bit different. But I just chose to go with this one. I just figured it would be kind of a generic snout to use. I noticed too that almost all of them had white around their eyes and around their snout. So I'm using ivory to paint a very thin area around the eyes and the snout. The eyes and the snout would, would look wet. So I'm using some of this diamond glaze to give them that shiny, wet appearance. I'm so glad I didn't leave this part off because it really helps add to the realism. At this point I was considering maybe trying to make some flocking and gluing it on or painting it. But I decided to go ahead and paint it and I'm glad I did. It, it was a lot easier. For the base color I used a light tan and then for the chest I used antique parchment. I used short brush strokes to give the appearance of the fur. Now he's really starting to look like a deer. I didn't try it in this video, but I hope to do some experiments using different paints for the fur. Once I was finished painting the chest fur, I decided to take some of the tan color and mix it with just a little bit of brown to give me a medium brown. And I'm just doing random brush strokes here and there to give the appearance of fur again. But I'm applying my brush strokes in the direction that the fur would be growing. I took some of that medium brown that I created and I mixed it with a little bit more brown to create a darker brown. And then I just painted a few more brush strokes, but not as many as the medium brown. For the antlers, I used the antique parchment again. I added a little bit of water to the medium brown and I gave the antlers a little bit of a wash so they wouldn't look so bright. For the ears, I took a piece of grocery bag and I applied glue to it and folded it over on itself. I traced out the ear pattern or an ear shape onto it and folded it down the middle and kind of pinched it at the end. And then I cut a little slice under each one of the antlers. I had to cut a little bit off of the ear on the point to make it sit right. I base coated the inside of the ear with the antique parchment and then I used the tan color to paint the outside of the ear and the edges a little bit. I glued the ears on before I glued the antlers in place. While I was gluing the antlers on, I also, because they are just the cardstock and the foil, they kind of bend a little bit. That way you can adjust the shape. When I held this deer mount up in the barber shop, it it took up a lot of wall space, so I ended up making a smaller one too. These turned out so well that I want to experiment making a moose next. Be sure to check in the description for the free download. Here's how that little guy looks in the barber shop. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.